we're going to talk today about AI-powered commerce. Um, really, again, we'll talk about a little bit about who we are. Uh, we'll share some of the trends that we're seeing in the industry. And finally, we'll share some of the uh, cool things that we're doing with our clients to help them take uh, AI and Gen AI uh, into production within the commerce space. So, welcome. Um, for starters, I'm a partner at Cordera, Elaine Moran. Uh, Cordera is a management and technology consulting firm. Uh, we're part of Omnicom, really do a lot of the dig digital transformation work uh, for them. Um, I lead our commerce practice uh, for North America. As you can see here, I have over 15 years of experience in the space, uh, across strategy, enablement, and optimization. Uh, you can see some of the logos here, uh, really just to give a sampling of the type of companies we do deal with, uh, everything from you know smaller boutique companies to um, Fortune 50 uh, firm. Um, also another kind of anecdote about myself, um, right out of college I uh, actually opened a restaurant. And you might ask yourself, why am I telling you this information? Um, and it really was the juxtaposition of running a restaurant and then going into the e-commerce space. Uh, that made me fall in love with uh, the analytics that exists in the commerce space. Um, if you kind of think about it, you know, it's like in the restaurant, I would make decisions about, you know, the menu and things like that based on observations, some data points about, you know, what are people buying, uh, but really all driven out of kind of gut feel and business sense. Um, after two years, if you don't know about the restaurant industry, it's pretty cutthroat, so got burned out sold the restaurant, decided to give e-commerce a, a try, and the amount of data that was available to me and to the business was amazing, right? And that's probably what a lot of, of you like e-commerce, like the space, uh, but really I was now able to make decisions based on really a lot of data points, right? I could see people interacting with the website, how they're interacting with it, the products that they're looking at, where they're leaving, um, really allowing me and empowering me to make data-driven decisions, testing those uh, hypotheses, and then actually knowing with statistical significance what are the things that are driving value to the business. So the juxtaposition between that and the restaurant business was just one of the things that made me really fall in love with the industry, and I'm sure, again, a lot of you probably have similar stories uh, and background. So with that, I'll pass it over to David. Thanks, Elaine. Yeah, great. Hi everyone, I'm uh, David Batrick. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I know we're almost at the end of this wonderful conference. Uh, I have been in digital marketing and e-commerce roles for about 20 years. I've worked with some wonderful blue chip clients including Starbucks, Prologis, P&G, uh, Molson Coors, Royal Mail, to name a few. Um, uh, part of my role is helping marketing leaders overcome com common e-commerce challenges. So whether that's uh, creating brilliant digital experiences, uh, leveraging innovative solutions uh, with the right technologies to build uh, long-term customer value and relationships uh, and to help navigate a complex landscape of technological and competitive challenges um, and ultimately to succeed in a dynamic digital marketplace. I am uh, originally from South Africa. I spent many years in London uh, with multiple digital agencies and I now reside in Colorado. Um, before we get going and get into the heart of our presentation, before I hand over to Olin, I did just want to take a second to introduce you all to Omnicom Commerce. Um, you may not be aware of what we do, uh, but what we stand for, and some of our AI-powered um, commerce solutions. So Omnicom Commerce provides um, leading-edge uh, commerce capabilities at a global scale. Uh, we help clients orchestrate intelligent outcomes across all commerce channels. Um, we are the world's largest end-to-end -end commerce experience company. We manage over $10 billion in retail media. Uh, we partner with over 50 of the top 100 uh, CPG uh, publicly listed companies. Uh, we also have over 400 digital marketplace partnerships and we have thousands of commerce specialists across the globe. Uh, we pr we, we, we um, pride ourselves on simplifying the complex um, by seamlessly integrating retail uh, and brand media, direct and third party media, um, digital and in-store experiences, precision marketing, and CRM. Our aim is to create 
seamless, consistent experiences where every touch point is tailored based on where the customer is in their decision journey. And in doing so, generating the best outcomes for our clients. Um, our capabilities cover the end-to-end -end commerce ecosystem, so from strategy to enablement to optimization. So whether it be omni-channel strategy or all things direct to consumer, leading edge commerce technology services, retail media, or marketplace activation, we have all bases covered. Uh, we're also continuously investing in the space uh, to power even more connected commerce solutions. Uh, so in January this year, Omnicom acquired Flywheel for just under a billion dollars. This was a significant acquisition for Omnicom, uh, as with the addition of Flywheel, we're now the most advanced end-to-end -end commerce experience agency. Um, Flywheel has helped us close the loop uh, in commerce experience through scaled marketplace activation. So think Amazon, Walmart, Target, etc., where many commerce transactions are happening today. We're also powered by the industry's biggest marketing data asset, Omni. Uh, Omni provides advanced analytics and insights into market trends, uh, consumer behavior, competitor analysis, uh, 360 cross-channel media planning and optimization, and enables data-driven decision-making. Uh, Omni is used in over 100 markets, uh, it leverages data from over 50 data partners, um, and works with hundreds of marketplaces. And with our acquisition of Flywheel that I just mentioned, combined, we've combined Omni and Flywheel Commerce Cloud. These integrated platforms enable brands to build and execute digital commerce strategies to drive sales and share across the full e-commerce ecosystem. We have, I think, over 30,000 power users of these platforms um, across, across the company. Um, the last thing I wanted to highlight before I hand over to Olin about our capabilities is Credera, which is part of Omnicom. Uh, Credera is one of the select few agencies in the world uh, that hold Adobe Global Platinum Solution Partner status. And we have achieved specializations across all Adobe solutions. Uh, this high level of proven Adobe expertise empowers Omnicom clients with tailored, scalable solutions that address their unique requirements of their respective organizations. So that is a very quick overview of Omnicom Commerce. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Oli, who's going to share with you uh, some of our AI-powered commerce solutions using Adobe and Omni that I just mentioned, um, and share uh, quite a few really cool demos with you as well. Thank you, David. Um, as David mentioned, again, we're going to uh, share some demos, but really before diving into those, um, wanted to share some of the things that we're seeing in the industry. Um, these are some of the stats that we um, have been looking at really leveraging and dictating why we're doing the things that we're doing. Um, so um, before we dive into that, um, like everybody here knows, AI is kind of a hot topic. Uh, I'm sure you've been hearing about it all week. You're probably sick of it a little bit right now. Um, but the reality is that 83% of companies consider AI a top priority. Um, we also know that in the commerce space, AI has really been um, at the forefront, right? And that's a historic, um, you know, we, for the longest time, e-commerce has been really leveraging AI, enhancing it. Um, and a matter of fact, a study shows that um, the e-commerce space is uh, number one when it comes to uh, early adoption. Uh, so they're really leading the way. However, there's still a lot of opportunity. Um, again, going back to my career, uh, so go back. I'm an analyst as, a, as an, in e-commerce, um, and there was a lot of data available to us. Uh, however, it still took us days and weeks um, to extract the data and get insights out of it, usually involving multiple systems, uh, putting them together into a spreadsheet. And then once we had those insights, we had to work with uh, building out experiences across multiple channels. My, my experience, I had to work with five different agencies in order to execute on these campaigns. And by the time they were out in production, I usually would have lost thousands, right? With some of the brands here in this building, that probably is more in the millions of side of things. Again, I worked for a smaller company. Um, so kind of how, what, are, what is it that we're seeing in the space that's really kind of helping and where are people investing from, a, from an e-commerce standpoint? Um, as an overall theme, it's customer journey, right? And that comes with no surprise. Everybody wants to uh, improve the customer experience. Um, however, uh, it's no longer our typical kind of e-commerce funnel, right? Where we land on a page, we want to get them to a category page and then a product and check out. 
Uh, it's really grown into an omni-channel experience where we really want to affect and influence the experience across the entire journey. Um, even though 76% of um, transactions are still going to be happening in, in physical locations, we now know that all of the digital touch points that happen in order to get customers in are super important and having a seamless experience from touch point to touch point continues to be a huge priority. So, how are we gonna get there, right? And where are people investing in the space? As a, at a super high level, chat continues to be the number one area of investment when it comes to Gen AI and AI. Uh, however, we see uh, personalization, content generation, and improved analytics uh, quickly gaining traction and those are the areas that today we want to focus on uh, and are investing heavily in this space. So diving into analytics, right? Um, what we're seeing is really a, a shift in companies that are moving from siloed manual data anal analysis into predictive analytics driven by data science. The reality is that getting better at collecting, we're getting better at collecting central and centralizing data. We use things like data lakes, CDPs, and other technologies to get faster, cheaper, and easier to use. 25% uh, of people um, are saying that, companies are saying that they're wanting to invest more into this space, um, and that's on top of 20% of those that think that they already have a great foundation. That means that about half of the people in this room think that AI analytics is a huge opportunity. However, there's still some concern, right? And that is data quality. 31% of companies list data quality as a big concern. Since we're wanting to gain insights from unstructured, semi-structured, and structured data uh, that live in silo systems, it is imperative that companies build a solid strategy around data pipelines and execution. If you put bad data in, you get bad insights out. So who's doing this well? Uh, we actually partner with Content Square. Um, they're using AI and Gen AI to um, really help companies identify insights, identify opportunities, right? They're collecting a lot of insights um, and they use those, that information in AI to make recommendations on how to improve your business, right? Another solution, Adobe is again, I'm sure you're hearing a lot of it on how they're building AI into their analytics package. Um, so those are two, two great examples. As we're moving into personalization, uh, what we're seeing really is a, a, a shift going from sales-driven product recommendations to omni-channel, one-to-one personalization. You know, historically, personalization has really been driven out of uh, product recommendations, right? This is, you take some web uh, signals like page views, uh, product data, transaction data, and you build out a recommendation engine that basically tells you, you know, people that bought this product also bought this product. Um, what we're really seeing in the space is people getting more sophisticated and companies leveraging additional data sources to help optimize their algorithms, becoming better at improving their personalized content and targeted promotions. Um, Sephora is a great company that kind of comes to mind when we're talking about best-in-class personalization, right? They offer users tailored experience in exchange for customer data, and that tailored experience results in higher customer satisfaction and increased revenue. So it's a win-win. Finally, from a, personal, from a content generation standpoint, um, as there's increase in personalization, the need for content grows at an exponential rate. Um, and we're seeing the change where companies are going from manual content generation to automated content generation. So that's been a big theme today and uh, this week, uh, and I'm sure you'll kind of continue to hear uh, the advancements that's happening in the space, um, specifically with Adobe. However, there's still a huge gap. Um, not a lot of companies are able to leverage this successfully uh, and are going to have to figure it out because in order to ensure that your content does not become, uh, does not come at an exponential cost as well. Um, some of the areas that we're seeing here um, is Firefly, uh, like we talked about, and then also leveraging solutions like OpenAI to build copy variations and translations. There are also companies that are building specific models for SEO uh, or uh, language translation, right? Um, as you can see on the board, um, a, a survey indicated that 61% um, of digital experience professionals are actively looking to use generative AI to generate images. 
Uh, a great case study is uh, Colgate, uh, who's working on releasing a Gen AI uh, tool to help them optimize product detail pages across different retail channels. They recognize that the different types of customers, right? You, the Target shopper is different than the Amazon shopper, uh, different than the Walmart shopper. Uh, so this Gen AI t uh, tool helps them better get their, uh, target their customers at the source of the interaction. So again, um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. I'm sure a lot of you are actively working on this. Um, so you're kind of like asking why we're here. Um, but the reality is that taking that the industry, sorry, the reality is that um, although AI has created a lot of excitement, um, only a quarter of businesses will benefit from Gen AI powered digital commerce. That is a big stark contrast of the 28th of the 83% of companies that we shared earlier that stated that AI is a top priority for them. And the reason is that taking AI into production is hard. Um, AI is coming up with ideas is not very difficult, right? And a lot of us probably have tons of ideas. Building prototypes, uh, also not super difficult. Uh, but really building the connectivity between taking something from prototype into production is very difficult. It requires a lot of um, operations and requires a lot of DevOps uh, and large investments in order to make sure that you create an ecosystem that is going to support AI in production and be successful with your customers. Uh, we have a quote from our CTO uh, that basically says that in AI there is more engineering and development than there is AI. Um, so the companies, who's doing this well, right? It's companies that are, again, investing heavily uh, to build that, that pipeline. It's companies that are partnering with consultancies like us or Omnicom. Um, and then it's companies that are buying products like Adobe uh, that have that built into their ecosystem and allow you to do these things, right? Uh, so our hope is that our solution and partnering with you will allow us to um, allow our companies, to, our, our clients to be one of the 25% that um, are able to leverage uh, Gen AI and AI and, and commerce. Uh, and that's the reason that we've developed the concept of intelligent commerce. So what is intelligent commerce you see? Uh, you see that these align to kind of the trends that we've identified. Um, and it really is a, a, an offering that we do to help our clients get, deep, get uh, AI and Gen AI into production. Um, the, starting from the left, um, analytics, um, again, data is distributed across many dif dif different systems. It's a Herculean effort, like I was explaining earlier, um, to really understand how customers are interacting across all touch points. Uh, we have products like AAP. Uh, this has become easier, uh, and by leveraging AI, we were able to further empower marketers to gather better insights faster. Um, we then kind of take those insights and we empower our customers to create more and better personalized experience across the ecosystem with solutions like RTCDP and AJO. Uh, we're able to orchestrate personalization at scale. What happens when you orchestrate personalization at scale? You require more content, right, in order to create all of those variations of uh, personalized experiences so we've built a plugin that allows us to quickly create uh, variations of that content uh, within the product pages, right? In e-commerce, product content is king. So uh, this solution really, we believe that it will help our clients get to market faster and at a lower cost. So to dive a little bit deeper, um, our offering is, oh, sorry. Okay. All right, forget that that happened. Um, our solution is made out of three key elements. Uh, Omni, uh, which David explained earlier, is the largest data asset, uh, one of the largest data assets that provides analytics insights into marketing trends, consumer behavior, and competitive analysis, and 360 cross-channel media optimization. We all know about Adobe and all of its capabilities, so I'll spare you a little bit right now. Um, I did want to talk about our marketing analytics platform, um, which is an accelerator that quickly deploys core infrastructure, data sources, and AI models into our customers' environments. 
So diving into a little bit more and kind of what it does is it really unifies first, second, and third party data to conduct analysis, identify opportunity, and build next best action recommendation. From a first party data standpoint, you see the Adobe ecosystem uh, really capturing a lot of that kind of first party data, right? You talk about web interactions, views, email opens, um, all of that kind of first party data. Um, we then marry it with the second party data that's coming from Omni, right? So we talked about marketplaces like Amazon, right? So we get product views within Amazon, product purchases within a Amazon, uh, and are able to take all of that information and stitch it together. And then finally, we bring in third party data, um, such as Axiom or Libram, uh, that are pulled in through our um, pre-built integration points. Um, our marketing analytics platform then leverages the pre-built models in order to create insights, uh, generate anomalies, uh, and give us next best action um, decisions and recommendations. One of the core things to point out here is that our marketing analytics platform is deployed within our cut client's ecosystem, right? Uh, it is very important for us to make sure that they own their own data. It's your data, your insights. So diving into kind of the three key use cases, um, we created a few, a series of videos um, to kind of demonstrate the, those, those uses, right? Starting with the advanced analytics piece, this capability is focused on taking disparate data sources like marketplaces like we just talked about uh, and combining them into this ecosystem. Um, so I wanna set the scene before we start the video. Uh, imagine a DTC uh, health and beauty company can quickly analyze data and identify an opportunity which is driven by a social event where a football Super Bowl winning star and his pop star girlfriend are spotted on a beach vacation using a particular video, a particular product. You'll see the marketer interact with our chatbot to quickly identify the impact this celebrity set, a sighting has had on the industry um, and understand the best way to make the best out of this social, social trend. Let's have a look. Imagine everything you need as a marketer right at your fingertips. Our tools give you the power to search complex data in seconds, implement key insight, and get your product out there with full integration across the Adobe ecosystem. Here's how. Let's say you run a website selling skincare products. As customers browse, AEP collects their data and sends it to OmniCommerce, where it gets added to data from sites selling similar products like Amazon. This data is then sent to MAP, where it's used to build a customer profile and create valuable insight that can be accessed quickly and easily with our chatbot. For example, here we see a marketer using our chatbot to look up sales for Aquaphor. They find a surprising uptick and learn that the product has gone viral after being spotted on a celebrity social media account. From here, we can see where Aquaphor is popular and use that data to focus marketing efforts where our customers live, work, and spend time online. Pretty cool, I think at least. Um, so just kind of sharing some of the stories that we've done from a Credera standpoint. Um, really wanted to bring together a, a case study about one of our clients, a large public uh, pharmaceutical manufacturer, um, where we really help them move from focusing on primary care providers uh, to individual consumers. And instead of me draining this slide, and because I love uh, movies, I will share another kind of live case study video. It was a massive challenge. Leaders at a Fortune 200 pharmaceutical manufacturing company with products in 120 countries and 60 unique brands had a vision to transform their marketing approach. How can each of their millions of marketing touch points become remarkable, personalized, and connected? The company's CMO realized this meant shifting the company's interactions with people, processes, data, and technology. So they engaged a global boutique consulting firm Credera. To effectively market personally and at the desired scale, Credera partnered with them on two critical work streams. First, we helped the company create a map or marketing analytics platform. Map provided data pipelines for a constant pulse of real-time customer insights and data reporting to drive customer engagement, conversion, and lifetime value. Second, 
Cradera then implemented a platform for dynamic content and layouts, which integrated into a headless CMS and enabled personalized landing pages, so customers became the center of every experience. Soon, this partnership generated tens of millions of dollars per quarter in efficiencies, such as retargeting spend. Cradera's MarTech expertise and flexible data-first approach continue to power dynamic customer experiences that create a staggering measurable impact on clients' businesses. To learn more about Cradera, let's start a conversation today. Uh, so moving on, um, we've gotten a lot of really good insights. Um, so how do we activate it, right? So leveraging the same data sources we described earlier, uh, we're now wanting to produce next best, next best action recommendation, right? That next best action recommendation includes the product, the geography, and the channel, right? We saw that in the previous um, video. The next best action decision can then generate segments within AEP that can be leveraged for activation across multiple channels. So, going back to our story, in the video you will see how the same marketer that is hoping to take advantage of said football Super Bowl winning star and his pop star girlfriend uh, citing can quickly activate key campaigns and personalization use case across uh, before it's too late. In our last video, we saw how to use our platform to gather insight. In this video, we'll take that insight and use it to create a targeted and personalized customer experience. So, now we know people in the great state of Michigan are buying the most aquifer, and that Instagram is their preferred social media platform. We can take that information and create a segment in AEP targeting customers in that state across multiple touch points such as Instagram and web. Then activate that audience with Adobe Target to create banners aimed at increasing conversion. In other words, the next time Joe Michigan Lender goes online, the system recognizes him as a member of the target audience and serves him an Aquaphor banner. And when he clicks the banner and lands on your site, we can boost Aquaphor to the top of the skincare category. Our next case study is with a large uh, auto manufacturer um, based out of uh, Europe, um, and they were really having a lot of trouble um, looking to optimize their media spend, right, and drive next best action modeling. So we built this ecosystem that allowed them to take those insights and models and activate them from a real-time real -time, uh, personalization leveraging uh, the Adobe ecosystem. Um, from a uh, results, you can see on the screen, it increased 65% in media conversion rates, uh, lowered cost uh, to 30% per conversion, uh, it increased digital engagement by 200%, and created a 5 to 1 um, ROI. Another plug, um, we took this solution and submitted it into the WinLift platform, uh, which is a, an Adobe-led uh, competition uh, focus on AEP innovation, and that one second place, um, again, it was an industry-specific vertical where we built models that are specific to the auto industry um, and deployed it into our ecosystem, which is the same ecosystem we've been uh, talking about today. Okay, so now we've created a lot of these personalization experiences. Like we mentioned earlier, um, with that comes the need for additional content. Right, so again, leveraging back, going back to our story, um, we now have to quickly generate copy variations for the personalized experience uh, that is targeting the fans of the affirmation football Super Bowl winning star, but in reality, the fans of his pop star girlfriend. An author can leverage our AI plugin to quickly build variation that can be leveraged on the site as well on the social media campaigns. Check it out. As you use the tools in the last two videos to drive users to your site and serve them personalized experiences, you're going to need something for them to actually look at. This demo focuses on how to use generative AI to quickly and easily create new content as traffic ramps up. Doing things like creating and updating product descriptions takes a significant amount of time and effort, especially when you consider things like different tones and languages for different audiences. We've created a way to streamline this process using generative AI that leverages product content such as specifications and user behavior 
and integrated this functionality into AEM. Variations of this content can then be published to different channels such as email and social, so that content creators can get their message out as efficiently as possible across multiple platforms. So this plugin is actually something that is uh, fairly new. So we don't we haven't actually deployed it to a client. Uh, however, did want to share this story that uh, has a similar integration uh, with a leading energy provider, where we help them modernize their architecture from a content management standpoint, uh, from an on-premise solution um, to Adobe Experience Manager. Um, part of their needs was really uh, improve their translation capabilities. Uh, so we integrated with a third party that focused um, on translating using AI uh, and built it into their kind of content production so that uh, authors could see the variation in the translation, make changes, and ultimately uh, deploy them. Um, this result uh, in, in increased sales goals exceeded by 37%, uh, cross sale goals by 137%. And allowed us to migrate four additional grants into this modern tech stack. So to recap, um, we have implemented and integrated our solution uh, with the Adobe Experience Cloud to help our cu customers take uh, AI use cases and help them deploy them online to get better insights, increase revenue, and find operational efficiencies. And I really wanted to bring you back, back to this quote. Um, to say that we believe that partnering with us and leveraging our intelligent commerce solution can help businesses, you help you be one of the 25% businesses that benefit from Gen AI powered digital commerce. And with that, we'll open it to Q&A. Thank you. And one thing, if anybody has questions, come to the microphone, please, or I can repeat the question. Yes, please. Um, how do you see Headless changing consumer experience in the future? Yeah, so the question is how do we see Headless uh, changing consumer experiences in the future? Um, it's a great question. Uh, we are seeing a huge trend of companies wanting to go um, to Headless and probably even further than that into more of like a domain driven architecture, um, especially in the e commerce space. So. Again, going back to that trend of kind of omni-channel experiences, Headless is really a, a catalyst to having a, being able to create those experiences uh, where you actually create different domains and then are able to deploy those experiences, not only within your web, but mobile apps uh, and you know, marketplaces. Uh, we're talking about doing it with you know, um, digital 3D experiences, right? Um, in automotive, we're talking about uh, feeding some of that information into, you know, auto uh, dashboard. Uh, so headless is a huge piece in the commerce space um, and something that we're doing a lot of work with. Um, and uh, I mean, a lot of companies are gonna have to adopt that in order to be able to create these kind of omni-channel experiences. Yes. Yeah, so that solution that we have uh, has integrated some of the plugins that we have integrated. You know, it's, it's BigQuery, um, Google Analytics, right? We also have integrations into others like Adobe Analytics. Um, but what we do is we can also bring in data from um, all of your search and uh, paid media uh, and run those algorithms in order to do that, right? Um, so it really is a way for you to level up and be able to use um, uh, get additional insights um, in the system. But I mean, depending on where you are in, in the maturity, you know, Google Analytics on its own um, can provide a lot of really good information. Uh, but there's an opportunity to improve that. Did that answer your question? Sorry. Uh, our team has an ability to see a for the relationships. Got it. Okay. Well, 
come to, come talk to us. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, I know a lot of people are trying to get to their long weekend, get home. Um, so just wanted to say thank you. Uh, we have our kind of information on the on, on there if anybody needs to reach out. We also have a you know um, a survey. So if you all are able to do that, please you know don't forget to fill the survey. Oh, was it too too fast? Well, thanks everyone for the rest of the conference.